So let me, like, sorry guys, let me start this over again. This is going to be a live solve. We're going to use on shape. We're going to live solve this thing. So let's try this again. So we're going to start out here by uh, good luck to all of you who are solving this thing. And we're going to start out here by going to tutaltoby.com and we are going to click get started. And then right here at the top of the page, you are all working on this challenge right now. And I am going to try to work on it as well. Click here to practice and click here to begin. So this is something that's available for any users, uh, regardless of what your, your level is, if you're a free user or if you've signed up for Practice Models Premium. Either way, you're going to be able to practice this model. I'm going to say click here to begin. That's the cool thing about the featured model. Of course, this will only be up there for a couple of weeks. So if you're watching this video later, then you'll have to try the new featured model. But either way, there'll be a featured model up there. So we're going to say reveal drawing and go. The clock is running. And the question is, what is the mass of this part in 0.0 xxx? pounds and we're going to try to enter that answer right down here and if you're watching the recording you might see some people in the chat trying to come up with this answer but this is kind of a cool one right what we could do with this is we could come up with the geometry for this shape here and perform a sweep and kind of sweep that around this internal shape here right we could do a sweep there or we could maybe come up with the geometry for this shape here in the section view that might actually be a little bit easier to come up with. Come up with the geometry for that shape there in the section view. And then we could take that geometry and we could sweep that. You could perform what's called a sweep. So that would be one of your sketches. This might be the other sketch. Then you do a sweep. Now that's going to end up being a little bit short here on this side. So we might have to add some extra material over here after we do that sweep. And then what we could do is maybe add that fill at the end. And, you know, when you, a lot of times when you look at a challenge like this, that's what you'll think of. That's where your brain will go right away. You'll think like, oh, I got to sweep this thing. That's how you make that. It clearly looks like a sweep. But the thing is, I think that in a case like this, sometimes we overthink the challenge. We overthink the geometry. And we want to remember that we have other tools that we can use, particularly when you see a note that says something like this. Whenever you see a note that says wall thickness typical, what you should be thinking right away is shell. Is it possible to do a shell here on this model? And when you start thinking about it that way, then you realize like, oh, this model actually could probably be done pretty quickly. So instead of doing it, you know, instead of creating the profile and sweeping it, maybe what I could do is create this shape here. So maybe this will be my first sketch directly on the origin, create a shape like this. And then maybe after we create that shape, we could extrude that shape here to our one inch dimension, our depth dimension of one inch. And then we could perform a shell and remove these walls around the outside. So a lot of times when you think of a shell, you think of like a, a container and you're shelling out the inside of the container. But occasionally you'll run into a spot like this where the shell can actually be applied on the outside. I think that's what we're going to do with this model. Now, the other lesson that we'll learn from going through and doing this model is to kind of keep your sketches simple. Don't don't feel the need to overcomplicate your sketches. You don't necessarily have to put every single fillet in that original sketch. And a lot of times I personally will opt to have sharp corners in the sketches. And then I'll go back and I'll add those fillets as features later on in the design so we're going to see some of that activity here today as well uh, so i'm just going to open up this uh there's a button here for premium speed run mode uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually have that available for everyone here in just another week or so but basically what that lets you do is it lets you make the the drawing more of like a, a modular or modal window so i'm going to put the drawing over here on my second screen i'm going to move the clock over a little bit so we can kind of keep an eye on the clock i'm going to move on shape over here onto this half of the screen so we can create the model here in on shape and let's give this thing a try and we'll see, you know, we'll see how long it takes us. I know it took us about three minutes to come up with a game plan, but listen, I always think it's important to come up with a game plan. I mean, the things I think about when I'm coming up with a game plan are what is my first sketch going to look like and where is my origin going to be? So I think in this model, my first sketch is going to look something like this, almost like a horseshoe shape with this extra shape in the middle. And I think I'll just put the origin right here, right at the center of that one inch diameter. This is clearly the functional diameter for this part. It's called a, a sliding uh it's called a sliding sleeve and clearly that one inch diameter is going to be sliding along some type of a post or a rod so that's going to be my origin as well it might help me for meeting this geometry later on as well aaron c says this part looks fun this is, looks like something i might actually make at work nice nice so i'm going to say create document here and i'm going to call this 25-04-06 sliding sleeve and i am creating this in on shape in the public space so if you ever get signed into on shape in a, a a paid account or a free account you can search the public space for this 
text string 25-04-06 sliding sleeve and then you could actually look up my model and look through the the history tree on my model let me bring up the keyboard cam as well and we're going to start out by going up here to this hamburger menu and choosing workspace units and making sure that we are working in inches because this model is in inches this model is in pounds ips inch pound second and we're going to say uh, green check mark there. And now we're going to stick to our game plan front plane. I'm going to press the letter S to bring up my key, my S key menu. I'm going to press the, the begin a new sketch command. I'll press N to get normal two. S to begin a circle. And I'll create a circle here with a diameter of one inch using auto dimensioning. S key, I'm going to create a line here that's going to come down. It's going to end up horizontal to the origin. Move away from that end point. And then without clicking anything, I'm just going to click on that end point again and come around with what's called a tangent arc so tangent arc there all the way around horizontal to the origin again single click now i'm going to move this up here and i'm going to move it so that it's horizontal to this point here single click and then my final move here this is one of my favorite things about on shape is that i can then click over here on this point and then after i click i can let go and i can type in 1.75 now you'll notice that currently that value is closer to 2.82 or 2.83 but the thing that's cool about on shape is that it will adhere to or it will uh it will utilize the relationships and it will it will maintain the relationships and honor the sketch relationships but it'll pull the dimensions in even if you dimension it after the fact like i'm doing here and that's something that i have found has been a great time saver so 1.75 enter and there we go and now all i need to do is just hit escape pick this point pick this point and press i to make those coincident and then add a quick dimension here for this line and that dimension is going to be 0 0.875. So that's the majority of that first sketch. I think the other thing that I'll do with this first sketch is I'll just add in a rectangle here. So S key, rectangle, and that's going to go from here down to here, like so. And the width of that rectangle is going to be 0 0.625. And I don't really need the depth. It's already picked up by the relationships. And then I can just pick on this point and this line and shift M to make those midpoint and that's going to be it keep your sketches simple right keep your sketches simple it's a great great strategy you don't have to go through and add all those fillets right now you could leave the sketch simple and add the fillets later at the feature level so s key extrude and i have customized my s key menu so right click customize that way extrude shows up there on that menu so s key extrude and then i'm going to press the space bar and then I'm just gonna pick this region here. I don't want the whole thing, I just want that region. So space bar to clear the current selections and then just pick this region here. This is gonna be a solid new depth is one inch and we'll make this symmetric and hit the green check mark. And oh yeah, that is looking good. And so now I can get in there and start adding some of those other fillets. So I could do S key fillet. I could pick maybe this edge here, and then I'm gonna pick this edge behind here, but I'm gonna use what's called select other. This is something that I've been doing a lot lately where I press the tilde key, which is that key in kind of the upper left corner, and then I'm able to select right through. So I just press that so that that edge is highlighted, and then I just left click, and that selects right through. So that's a little, little trick that I've been using a lot more lately. So this radius here is gonna be 0.5, and then instead of just pressing enter, so if I press enter, that updates the preview, I'm gonna hold shift and press enter, and that repeats the fillet command. So now I could go in here with a fillet of 0 0.25 and add in a fillet here and here. And then once again, I could do a shift enter. Now I could add these both in the same command because they both are 0 0.25, but I'm gonna add them in two separate commands because they, they're kind of act functionally acting differently. And it's likely that they may change radius independently. So in case the customer comes back to me later, I'm gonna make sure that I um, give myself the flexibility to change the model. So I'm gonna press shift enter, finish that fillet, jump into another fillet, and then I'll pick this edge here and this edge back here. And because Onshape utilizes what's called tangent propagation, tangent propagation that means that when i just pick this one edge here on shape automatically fill it's this edge because it's tangent and this edge because it's tangent and this edge because it's tangent and this edge because it's tangent so that's a really nice feature in on shape when you're adding fillets you don't have to go around and pick every little edge there so i'm going to hit the green check mark and there we go that model is looking good and now we're kind of the final phase of this thing which is just to add the shell so the shell command is up here, usually on your toolbar, but if you can't find it, you can use the search tools shell. 
And then once you click on the shell command here, shell, the shell wall thickness is going to be 0 0.125. And we're going to pick this face, this face, this face, this face. Well, again, what we could do here is we could right click and say um, select. And then we could say select tangent connected faces, tangent connected faces. And that goes around the whole outside and gets all those faces in kind of one click or one right click selection so instead of having to go around and pick 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 all those faces you could right click and say select tangent connected faces and so now we can hit the green check mark and look at that that part is looking good we can press the letter p which hides our planes in on shape we could uh, go over here to the display options we could say tangent edge visible tangent edge with phantom make the tangent edges a little bit easier to see make them tangent instead of making them hard black edges and uh, then what we could do is we could come over here to the parts list and we could right click and say edit appearance and change that appearance to kind of like a gray appearance and then what we could also do is we could right click on that part in the parts list and we could say assign material and on the drawing it says this material is supposed to be uh, 1060 aluminum alloy so 1060 alloy here and we hit the green check mark we come down here to the little set of scales we click on the part to measure the mass of this part and we are coming up with a mass of 0.067 but if we hold our mouse over that mass we can see that it's actually telling us it's 0.0665 and so the the uh, drawing is asking us what is the mass of this part in 0.0 xxx so that should be 0.0665 so let's give that a try here in our mass we put in 0.0665 and enter and oh yeah we did it congratulations this answer is correct we did it and that's going to give us one point on the community scoreboard and that feels pretty darn good so i'm going to say submit here and yes congratulations we did it so it looks like 10 people were able to complete that model faster than me there's 10 people in the chat that are faster than me. Let's see who the first person was. Wow, Dom already has a video po posted up here for his speed run. That is incredible, considering I just... How did you even get that posted so fast? Wait, we got to see what this video is looking like. Let's see what this thing looks like. Wow, he did do it with a sweep. That's crazy. Dom, you're crazy, yo. It's like he was listening to me explain it, and he, he just blasted through and did it. Wow. That is amazing. This video was just posted one minute ago. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Look at that. One minute ago. Wow. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Dom's channel. That is amazing. Good job, man. That's fast. Wow, wow, wow. So let's see also in the top 100, who do we got here? We got Dom.